You may be seated. I was apologize. I was talking to my son there, and I never noticed that he'd already asked for me to come up to the the pulpit. I'm still living on the joy and honey of last night, just having a great jubilee in my soul. After going home and praying a while and reading and then going to bed, I got up this morning just feeling on top of the world. I, I love to feel that. Coming in yesterday, uh, Satan has been giving me a kind of a rough way to go, as you know what, the street expression. And I uh, had been feeling the effects of his presence, spiritually speaking, for some time because I believe it's the bringing in of my new ministry. He'll do everything he can to knock me away from that. But I'm going right on by the grace of God. So the Lord willing, tomorrow night I want to, to tell to the congregation all I know about it. Tomorrow night, just how I've come up to the present time, and I believe it's just about almost time for it to be issued in, trusting that it will be during this meeting that God will do that. And I'm sure you all had good times this morning at the churches around and everything, great turnout and the glory of God, so that's really good. It makes us all happy, and the best is just ahead. And that's right, tonight it will be better than it was this morning. We just keep filling up, and then we get just running over after a while, just filled up so full. As David said, my cup runneth over. I like to get that running over potion, don't you? Just running over. And then you can help somebody else when you're running over. So remember this coming week now, if the Lord is willing, we'll um, be speaking Monday night, the Lord willing, upon the issuing in of the new ministry. Now, many know that way back from the beginning how the Holy Spirit revealed first before I started on a gift. And then I come up to the West Coast across Canada for three or four years telling you that he said that something else would come which would be far greater. Then along it came. Then he said, just keep humble, keep away from money and all the things of the world. Don't ever try to be big. Just stay humble and there'd be something else greater. Now that's coming in now, you see. Oh, he's just God. That's all I can say. Just amazing grace. How sweet the sound. So we're happy for these things and grateful to God for them. Now, we're, I just asked Billy out there, uh, asked Leo and Jean if they'd give out any prayer cards, and they said no. And I said, did Billy give out any? He said no. Then I met Billy here, and he said yes. So then I guess we'll have a prayer line this afternoon, the Lord willing, after the message. And now, before we turn to the book, the book of books, it's a book that's never been anything written like it, and there's a... It's a love story, a prophecy. It's, it's a book of Psalms. It's, it's just the complete everything that we have need of in this journey is right here in the book. And I'm kind of a person of one book. That's the Bible. Plenty in it. I love what he said because I know this is the inspired Word of God. I stood at Bombay, India some time ago with the Koran in my hand on one side and the Bible on the other before Oh, a quarter of a million or more Mohammedans. And I said, something, someone has got to be right and someone's got to be wrong. These books both speak of a God, but contrary one to the other. Mohammeds believe that Jehovah God is God, but they believe that Mohammed was his prophet. We believe that there's one true and living God, and Jesus is his son. So I said, now, if Mohammed was his prophet, what Mohammed prophet prophesied, if he was a prophet of God, it'll come to pass. I said, if Jesus was the Son of God, then he was God of the prophets. And what he said will come to pass. They both wrote books, made promises. Now let's see who keeps his promise. Oh, my. Know that you can put them to a showdown that God keeps his promise, every one of them. Don't be afraid to put it to a test. If you're the seed of Abraham, as we talked of last night, just believe it. God will bring it to pass. Everything that he has promised. 
because if he if he doesn't, then this he isn't God, and this is not his word. If it's, if this is the promise, and if he doesn't keep his word, that's the reason I believe solemnly in the Bible. I uh, no doubt what I have plenty of Catholic friends sitting here this afternoon. I was asked by a Catholic friend of mine not long ago. He said, "Why is it that you don't return to the Mother Church?" I said. You're referring to the Catholic Church? He said, yes, sir. I said, I am a Catholic. He said, you're a what? I said, I'm a Catholic. And he said, a Roman Catholic? I said, well, I'm just a Catholic, that's all I know. And he said, how do you figure that? I said, is it true that you say that the Bible is a book written by the early Catholic Church, that Jesus Christ established the Catholic Church, Peter being the, the Pope and the apostles and so forth, he said, that's correct. And the, the apostles was the first original Catholic church. He said, that's true. I said, then, I'm an old-time Catholic. I believe what the old-time church taught and not what the new Catholic church teaches. So I'm more of a Catholic than you are, because I believe what they said first was right. These men walk with God. There's too much contrary. No other mediator between God but that one man, Christ Jesus. We can't have a whole lot of virgins and saints and everything mediators. There's one mediator, that's Jesus Christ. And the early church, the early Catholic church that walked with him and talked with him and wrote this book and the Holy Spirit in the back of it said, if any man will take anything out of it or add anything to it, this finishes it all. If any man shall take away or add to, the same will be taken out of the book of life for him. So I'm an old-time Catholic, one of the first ones, the early apostle Catholic. So we love the Lord that way and stay with his word for what he has written. We believe solemnly to be the truth. This is the truth of God. No contradiction, no misreading. It's just the truth. Now let us pray before we read it. And while we have our heads bowed, I wonder how many would like to be remembered in prayer. Would you just raise your hands and say, God, be merciful to me. Now, be thinking this, especially you sinner friends. I was at breakfast this morning in your fair city. There was a newspaper laying there, and I noticed where Max Baer, the world champion, former world champion, dropped dead yesterday. A great rough fighter. Early, strong man. But did you read what his last words was? No matter how rough you are, when that time strikes you, you better be ready. No matter how, how religious you are, how much you go to church, you better be right with God when that strikes, because that's it. Lord, we would pray, Lord, that that man, Mr. Max Bear, I, I, I did not know him, but being at, at the end of the road, he screamed your name, have mercy on him, Lord. And now, Father, we would pray for those who are here that's just raised their hands, and for many of those who should have raised their hands, perhaps, and did not. We pray, Lord, that you remember them now while they're in their right mind, feeling healthy, that they'll make that decision today for Christ. And be sure of it, that they are right with God before that hour comes. Lord, we ask today for all those who are needy everywhere. And this morning when that drunk man may be sitting present now, moved up there to the car and asked for enough a nickel or a penny to help him get a drink. Well, I put him my arms around him and said, Brother, my daddy died drinking. Don't do this. I could not give you money to drink. I'm a minister. And the tears coming down his cheek. Asking you to bless him. Now, I pray, God, if he's in divine presence now, that this will be the day that he'll make his decision. And if he's out on the street somewhere, 
Let the prayer take effect, Lord, and save that poor man, so bound by the power of the enemy. I pray for the sick and the afflicted, that's bound in other ways by the enemy. May Satan turn them loose. May there come a revival through this country that will sweep from coast to coast. We pray that you'll bless thy word as we read it, and may the Holy Spirit take the word and may it fall into every heart and lay there until it grows into the promise. Grant it, Father, we'll give thee the praise, for we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. Now, you that have your Bibles and would like to mark the text and so forth, turn with me to St. Matthew 21, and we're going to read the 10th and the 11th verses of Matthew 21. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. If I was taking a text, I would take it something like this, them last three words in the tenth verse. Who is this? It must have been just about sunrise. The people had begun moving around in the city because it was to be a very busy day. You see, it was the Passover. People had gathered from all over the world to this Passover. It happened annually. It's where the Paschal Lamb was killed and the blood was sprinkled. But there were so many people there this time until there was no room for them to sleep inside the city. They were laying out on the hillside just laying down anywhere they could to sleep, because this was a special Passover. You know, God does sometimes do things just special. We have meetings sometimes that just stand out. Something special happens. In revivals, something special happens. And the people realized that there was something going on, yet they could not say just what it was. The whole air seemed to be charged with expectancy, just like it is today. The whole air, the atmosphere over the world is charged. We are expecting expecting something, but we, there's many that just doesn't know what to expect. But there were some people there who were expecting him to arrive. They believed him. And they know that he kept his promises because it had been noised out that he was going to be there. And the people were waiting for him, believing that he would keep his word. And under that great charge of expectation, there was somebody that knew what it was all about. And so is it today. In this time of a frustration, nations against nations, our enemy coming over trying to make peace like it was at the time of Pearl Harbor with another enemy. The people just don't know what to do. When they speak of billion-dollar missile programs and, 
and see who can make a race to the moon and other science saying that it might set the whole universe afire. And war everywhere, just at one moment some fanatic could touch a little lever and blow the whole world up. Everybody's at attention. They go down the street 60 miles an hour in a 30 mile zone to get to a beer joint to drink a little beer before they get home. They'll run over you in a grocery store. They have no time for nothing and they don't know what they're in a hurry about. Ask them, what's your hurry? They don't know because it's something fixing to happen. I'm so thankful that there's somebody who knows what's going to happen. We know it's the coming of the Lord. He said these things would be just before his coming, that this would be taking place. And it's like it was at Jerusalem that day. Some didn't know, but there was others who didn't know. And we can see them little groups, some over by the east gate and some by the west gate, and some in different places. But after a while, we begin to see them all coming together at the east side of the gate. That was a sign that something was going to happen. For when God's people begins to come together, Something's fixing to take place. A little group from Galilee and, and one from Nazareth and one from Bethlehem. and They begin to get together because they had the same feeling. And like it is today when we begin to see ministers of different denominations getting together in heavenly places. Different colors, different creeds. And yet that doesn't even enter their mind. They're assembling themselves together. That's been the burden of my heart to see the church assemble together. Not speaking of their denominations, just coming together in fellowship. I believe that's the working of the Holy Spirit run man together to drive his church together. When Solomon's temple was cut out, parts of it was cut out all over the world. The logs floated into Joppa and from there the cart onto Jerusalem and so forth and the stones from different parts, the cedars of Lebanon. But when it came together, there was no friction ever stone was cut just right for the city of the building. I believe that's what God's done to the days come by. The Holy Spirit just cut them out and made them just a little different one from the other so that they fit together in this great economy of God. But I believe the time is at hand now where they're coming together. There's no buzzing, no friction, just coming together. I can watch those little groups as the Galileans come and the ones from the different parts of the world who came. Why did they have come together? Because they were kindred spirits. Now the rest of the religious world of that day, they didn't know what it was all about. But these people who had things on common ground who had seen Jesus and known his nature and known what to expect of him, they were coming together, making themselves one unit because they, had, they knew him. Now that's what's happening today. There's many people who go to church. There's many who recite the creed. There's many who study the scriptures. But there's some who know him. Not to know the creed is the salvation. Not to know the rules of the church is not eternal life. 
Not to belong to the church's eternal life. Those things are good. But yet to know him is eternal life. To know him, the person, Christ. That's where eternal life lays, is knowing him personally, yourself. Know his nature. Know what he does. How he acts. And then, when you do that, you have a knowledge of his word, what he wants you to do. That's where faith comes. You cannot go step out half, halfway thinking he might do it or he probably will do it. Perhaps he will. You've got to know exactly it's his will. You've got to believe it with all your heart. A person comes to me recently and said, Brother Bram, do you really think it's wrong for a man to smoke cigarettes as a Christian? I said, why did you ask me? That proves that you're condemned or you wouldn't have asked the question. If there is a question in your mind, get away from it. You cannot walk by faith with a question mark in your mind. If you're a Baptist, you've got a question mark. Pentecostal, got a question mark. Presbyterian with a question mark. Get that question mark out of the way. Know him. Then there's no question to it. You know you pass from death unto life because you know him. His spirit dwells in you. You take his nature. His words alive in you. Everything he said is amen. You'll not say the days of miracles is past and no such a thing as divine healing with the spirit of the living God who wrote the Bible in you. You can't do it. He'll vindicate himself. Then when you see such things going on, you'll not criticize that. You'll glorify God. Because the very spirit that wrote them and is performing them will bear witness of them. That's the spirit of the church of the living God. The living God living in the living church. And they are dead to sin and trespasses and have been awakening in his likeness and moved by his spirit. Therefore, no matter what denomination you go to, if you are born of his spirit, you have his nature in you. They knew his nature. So they were remembering that he had made a promise. And those who know him and know when he promises anything, he keeps his promise. He said, heavens and earth will pass away, but my word shall never fail. He keeps his promise. And those who are natured like him, has his nature in them, believe that with all their hearts. That's the true seed of Abraham that we were speaking of last night. If the Bible said he was wounded for our transgressions, with his stripes we were healed, the true seed of Abraham says, Amen, that's the truth. Because the Spirit of God is in them. And they witness to the truth. They don't take what things look like. They take what God said about it. What if Abraham would have took what it looked like? Twenty-five years waiting for a promise that God gave him. Why, well, he'd have never had the baby. He'd have never, he'd never been the father of little Isaac. But he believed God's word and wouldn't turn it loose. But he watered it day and night, strong, giving praise unto God. Oh, and Sarah say, honey, it's been 25 years ago since the promise was made. Here I am, nearly 100. He say, praise God, we're going to have it anyhow. Because God said, so and that settled it. Right. He knows the nature of God because he was a friend of God. He knows how to take him because he knows that his promises, no matter how foolish they look or how simple they look or how unreasonable they look, they were true because God said so and that settled it forever. That's the way every seed of Abraham does today. That's the way the born-again Christian does today. No matter what the world says, what science says, what they say, this, that, or other, God's word stands above it all, and they're looking at his word and what he said to be the truth. It doesn't matter if they say that the world can't be burned up and the dead or that body can't rise again. God said so, and that's the truth that settles it forever. God said so, and we keep our eyes on what he said. Now, they believe his word to be the truth. So, they believe that he kept his promises. 
So they gathered themselves together and waited outside the gate. And the city went on with their ritualistic ceremony, the religious worshipers of the city. The unbelievers went about their tasks. The religious people was at the temple doing all their ceremonial worship as they were celebrating something that happened back in Egypt. But the believers were on their toes watching for him to come. Oh, there were many in the city who loved him. There's no doubt many of them believed in the coming of the Messiah. But they didn't have the Spirit of God in them to draw them to him. There's millions today that go to church and worship, but they don't know him. And just as it was then, so will it be at his coming. They won't see him. There were thousands in Jerusalem that felt that expectation and that excitement going on. They never did see him. And the sad thing to say today, yet the scripture must be fulfilled, there's millions of Americans that go to church regular and, and faithfully that will never see him when he comes. Because the bride will be caught away like a thief in the night, he'll come. He'll catch the bride away and the rest of them won't see him. Think of it, millions of Americans going to church in ceremony, worship, but will never see him when he comes. The elected, the bride will be caught away just as it was then. They had gathered outside the gate. They were talking to one another with perfect confidence that he'd come. Let's say there was an unbeliever passed by. Why are you people gathered out here? Why aren't you up there at the, at the worship? We have something in our hearts. We're waiting for the Messiah. Oh, you bunch of religious fanatics, might be said to them. Why don't you go with the rest of them? There's something about it. When a man or a woman is born of the Spirit of God, they don't go with the rest of them. They go with God where he goes. They worship with his people. For God is his Spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in the truth. That's the reason they wasn't with the rest of them. And as they waited with long expectations, after a while, up across the hill came someone riding on a little white mule. It was a type of his coming the second time from heaven, riding on a white horse. Coming up over the hill on this little donkey, little white donkey, nobody paid any attention to him. But these who were looking for him, they cut down branches and run out screaming, Oh, there! To the son of David that comes in the name of the Lord. Their hearts were thrilled above measure, for they were expecting him, and all their expectations had been met. For they know the scripture had said he would ride into Jerusalem on a mule. And they see him coming. The rest of the city went right on with their pouring of waters and washings of pots and their ceremonies as they went on. And when they heard this great noise begin to start, Hosanna, Hosanna, screaming to the top of their voice. Oh, I can imagine what those people say. You're interrupting our church service with your noise. Do you think that stopped them? The very Christ that they had looked for was right with them. How could you stop them? And it caused a great stir in the city. The people begin to say, Who is this that causing all of this stir? Who is it? He's got the people, that little group of, of people wrapped around him. Who is it that's causing this? They couldn't find him in any of their books. They had none of their seminaries that produced him. None of their churches had produced him. Therefore they asked, who is it? Who's causing this stir? What makes these people act like that? The religious people were saying. 
What makes these people scream? Why are they hollering Hosanna? Make them hold their peace. He said, if they hold their peace, the rocks will immediately cry out. Something had to take place because a living Christ was much a living people. Something had to take place. The coming of the Holy Ghost in this last days has caused somewhat a like manner stir amongst the people. Of the coming of the Holy Ghost in these last days has sent forth a revival. A people that's a called out, separated people. A people that's free in the religion. That shouts and screams the praises of God. That believes in signs and wonders. Why? The same thing as it was then is now. The Spirit of the living God lives in them. That's why they cry out. That's why they can't hold their peace. And the religious world looks on. What's the matter with them people? Who is this? What causes this? Or may I might say this, what is this? What is this that causes that? If they would only read the Scriptures, they'd find out that it's the Spirit of Christ promised by God that in the last days I'll pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. And there will be a latter rain, a rain of the Spirit of God falling upon the people in the last days. And he said there will be also a latter rain and a former rain in the same time. Now, a few years ago, the Holy Ghost went forth upon the people, believers, and it caused them to shout and to praise God and to separate themselves from sin and the things of the world and to come out and be a separated people. And the Holy Ghost was poured out upon them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied and done miracles and signs. It was the latter rain falling. And then, did you notice, he didn't just leave it without that, or by that. He said the former rain also will come with the latter rain. Did you notice what the first rain was? Was his own rain. After that come the rain of the apostles. And in this last days, both the rain of the apostles and the rain of the Lord Jesus. That's what's making the people cry out, Hosanna to him that cometh in the name of the Lord. That's the reason people today in the religious world ask, what's this fuss about? Why do they holler so loud? What makes them scream? What kind of a language do they talk in? What is all these things about? The world asks who it is but the saints cry, who's there? To him that cometh in the name of the Lord. It's the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, poured out upon the church without my face to show signs and wonders. The church knows it. They're born to the Spirit. Watch how he did it. The latter rain comes, and then the former rain comes with the latter rain to confirm that the latter rain was true. Now the people said, that people are crazy. They went out of their minds. Why, well, they're a bunch of fanatics. That's the same thing they said about him. They were mixed in their opinions. They didn't know what to do, but they know something was happening. But what? They called him when he came in the former rain. They said he was the Beelzebub, the devil. How many times did you hear people say that they are speaking tongues as of the devil? Haven't you heard it? Then people crazy raise up their hands and shake and speak in tongues and shout. They just don't understand it, that's all. Scriptures are fulfilled. This great gush that's coming now is only getting a church ready for him when he will come ready, oh my heart. They'll be assembled together in one court in one place, and there will come the Lord Jesus. They don't understand it. They said there's something wrong with those people. They're mad. That's the thing they said about him. They said, what school did he come from? What denomination does he belong to? Is he Pharisee, Sadducee, or Lady? What is he? He didn't belong to any of them. 
He belonged to God because he was the Son of God. The Holy Spirit's not limited to any denomination. It's of God. And it's for whosoever will let him come. He doesn't limit you to any of us. It's just something that's happened to us. What's it doing? It's preparation for the resurrection. Preparation for the coming of the law. Now you see the people congregating together. The church is breaking down their little differences and all coming together. They're getting ready. Well, we'll see one of these mornings coming in glory. Now, in those days, they said, this man, there's nothing to him. We can't figure him in our book. We can't place him anywhere in the scriptures because the Bible said the scriptures was blinded to them. They couldn't understand such after Jesus had done so many miracles, yet they could not believe him because the Bible said, Isaiah, they have ears and can't hear, eyes and can't see. They were blind and he was hid from them. But then they come around to criticize those that had it. Now these people are odd people. They might not be able to explain it, but they got it. That's the main thing, is have it. I can't explain how them lights burn. Nobody else can. But we got it just the same. That's where it's the Holy Ghost. I can't tell you how it comes. It just, it's just here. That's all I know. And it proves itself it's here. Someone asked me one time, where did them ravens get bread and meat, fried meat, or whatever what it was that he said Elijah with? Where did a crow get that meat and feed him for three and a half years? I don't know. Maybe Elijah didn't either. But the only thing that he knew is that the ravens brought it and he eat it. He lived three and a half years by it. That's the way it is by the Holy Spirit. I can't tell you where it's at, what it does, but the only thing I know it comes and we get it and receive it and have it. It's our heritage from God by the grace of God. The Holy Ghost, it runs to the church. God gave it to the church to lead and guide it. The peculiar church, out to the things of the world, but glorious in the sight of God. That's his church. They could not explain it. They did not know why they were doing this. They said, their leader, their leader, what is he? He's a faith healer. Now, isn't that just about the way it is today? A faith healer. And he is a friend of that wild, crazy man with no clothes on, piece of sheepskin wrapped around him, called him John the Baptist. He was a friend to him, and that's the kind of crowd he's associated with. What's your boss? Thank be to God for that crowd. I'm glad to be with him. I like to say with the Apostle Paul of old, in the way that's called heresy to the world, that's the way I worship the God of our fathers. So oh, they were waiting for him. And when he came, they knew him. They knew his nature. Now today the church, after it has received the former rain, I received the latter rain, the pouring out of the Holy Ghost upon the church. That was first. They received the Holy Ghost, the latter rain. Then the former rain comes back with the latter rain, to unite with it to prove that the latter rain was right. Now the Holy Spirit has come into the church to give signs to German. Why do we know it's right? Because it's the same spirit with the same action, with the same sign, with the same wonder, with the same power, with the same of all that was in the early church is in this church. Discernment of spirit, prophecy, tongues, interpretations. Divine healing, power. Why, it'll take a born again church to believe that. There it is today. The same church. The Holy Ghost fell some time ago, 30, 40 years ago, here in America. And the Pentecostal move went to Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, everywhere. Called out the elected of God. Get them together. They organized themselves. They got little group talk, Singers of God, Church of God, Foursquare, and all of those. But the hour has come. Glory to God. The hour has come. A little difference is gone. The churches are sending themselves together. The power of God is at our hand. And Jesus, our Lord, is in the midst of us. Moving, showering, down the ladder, raining, pouring out together. Shamefulness is leaving the churches that are coming in, not asking questions, just raising their hands and praising God. One of these mornings we'll see him come riding across, not a hill, but across a great white cow gallery, riding on a white charger to take away his church. 
while the world is still saying, Who is this? What is this? What's it all about? They that know their God shall do exploits in the last days. We're at the end time. Now, the Pharisees said, Who is he? They know who he was. Now, the question is this today. When you see him come and stand in the meeting, the Holy Spirit, and give a person enough faith to speak to another one here and tell him just exactly all about his life. What could do that? Whatever did do it. Never did. Until Jesus came and never has since then. What is it? The former rain coming into the latter rain. And the people called you crazy. Sometimes maybe you've had to hold on with teeth and toenails, as we call it, to try to hold on to what you know was right. Now the Holy Ghost has come right back around and confirmed with the former rain into the latter rain to prove that it was his move. They're both falling together. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Oh, I wish you could see that. Amen. That's a great move of God that started 40 years ago. Back down when the latter rain began to fall. The former rain, the former power that started with Jesus Christ has come into this church and proven that he is the same Jesus Christ. Amen. Then the church begins to move forward, gathering themselves together, breaking down everything, moving out. <laughs> the world's just saying, who is this? What is this? The question is not what they said. The question is to you, what do you think it is? Who do you think it is? Would you class it Beelzebub? Would you say a spiritualist? Would you say a fortune teller? Would you say some kind of a mental telepathy? Or do you say, Hosanna to him that cometh in the name of the Lord. That him is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God that's come in power and resurrection to prove that Jesus Christ is not dead, but he is alive and ready to return for his church. Do you believe it? Let us bow our heads. O oh Lord, truly these words are the truth. We believe that the hour is so close to the coming. The world is quivering. They don't know what's the matter. But we know that Jesus is on his road. And we're beginning to congregate ourselves together. By the gate, the gate of the power of God. Those who believe in God, those who are born of his spirit, those who have the Holy Ghost, they know that that Holy Ghost is the Spirit of God and that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He cannot change his nature, for he's God. And when God comes into people, it makes them believe for the impossible. It also produces the same kind of fruit that the farmer rain produced. Because it is the former rain mixed with the latter rain. And the world cries out, who is this? Or what is this? They don't have it on their book. They don't believe in that kind of a coming of a Christ. They're still having their ceremonies. Walking to statues and blessing themselves and washing and sprinkling of waters and wearing of clothes. But the church of the living God is making herself ready inside by renewing their faith daily in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit now has come in, and in this latter rain he has placed it in there, already confirmed around the world amongst the believers, that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same Jesus that a woman touched his garment in the former rain, and he turned and told her what her troubles was, and she was healed. He's the same Jesus who told Peter his name was Simon, and he is going to call him Peter, and his father's name, what he was. And they told Nathaniel where he was before he came to the meeting. He told the woman of Samaria uh, what her sins was, looked out across the audience, and perceived the thoughts of her heart. And when the great St. Paul wrote, the Spirit of God is sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing even to the thunder of the mire of the bone, and a discerner of the thoughts of the heart. Jesus speaking and said, As it was in the days of Sodom, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Seeing that angel, that man, come in a human form, eating and drinking milk, eating flesh from a calf, eating butter, corn cake, and sit there and ask Abraham, who he knew not, where was Sarah his wife? 
And in the tent she laughed, and he said, Why did she laugh? Jesus said, That will come again just at the age of destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. How the modern world down in Sodom was still doubting and frustrated, just saved by the skin of their teeth. But yet, Lord God, we see the atomic power, the hydrogen power is laying in the hands of the enemy. Most any time the heavens could be on fire, as it was in the days of Sodom. Here is the latter rain been poured out now forty years. It's went through the people into the second generation is starting. That generation, the first generation rose up. The second generation was the one that went over in the promised land. Father God, have mercy. You have sent your spirit. You confirm those words. You are pouring out in the latter rain now, in this second group, the former rain also. And they're seeing it, they're believing it, they're embracing it and crying. It is the Holy Spirit coming in the name of the Lord Jesus. It's the Holy Ghost and we embrace it and believe it and crying, O oh Lord, no matter what the world says, get more of it to us, Lord. Oh, raise up a standard against the enemy every time he comes in like a flood. It's your promise. Father, we pray today that you'll confirm your word with every heart in here. May there not be one person go out of here that misses the message. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. scientific world is such a picture of his being, the great pillar of fire that led the children of Israel. We have it in our midst. By scientific proof, we have it in our hearts because of his grace. And now we see it and wonder if it is the right spirit the world might say. We watch it and see it does the same things the former angel did. 
And what the latter rain did. It does the same thing it did in the Bible. We know then it is the Spirit of Christ. We love you, Lord. There's not a shadow of doubt in our hearts. If there is, take it away, Father. If there are some here, Lord, today that hasn't enjoyed this fellowship around the Holy Spirit, that doesn't know for sure whether they're just right, may this be the hour that you speak to them. Talk to them, Lord. Now, words are words, but we know that God's word is true. Now, make your words live again among us this afternoon by signs and wonders that everyone might know and believe that you remain the Son of God. And this that they're speaking of and wondering what it is and who it is, may they know. May they hear a word like the disciples that night on the boat when they thought it was spooky, some spirit was walking on the water. Said, Be not afraid, it's I. Be of a good cheer. And then, Lord, may every wayward person in here welcome the Savior into their little, their little bark that their sailing life solemn man in. Grant it, Father, that he might take them to the land where there's no death, no sickness, no sorrow, no old age or nothing that will ever diminish. It will all be perfect there. May Christ come into every unsaved heart and be the pilot and guide from this hour on. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Now the prayer card was give out B, B, 1 to 100. What did we start at the last time? Didn't we? 1. We started on 1 the last time, so we just break it up somewhere else. Let's start at 25. All right? 25. Who has it? B, 25. Raise up your hand. Prayer card B, 25. Someone got it? Where? 25? 26? Who has 26? 27? Raise your hand if you can get up. 27? 28? 28, who has B card? 28? 29? 30? 30? 30? 31? 32? 32, I didn't see your hand. Please raise quickly so we won't spend much time. We want you to get back home now so you can go to church tonight. 32? 33? 34? 35? 36? 37? 38? 39? 40? Forty, forty-one, two, three, four, five. How much room you got on there? We don't know how far it'll get, we don't know. Forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, fifty. It doesn't matter just how many is there, the thing is to get just your attention to Christ. How many of us here last night? Let's see your hands. We never even had a prayer card last night. Don't need him now. Oh, he's here. I'm so glad. I'm so How many other hasn't got a prayer card? Raise up your hand. All right. Look this way and believe. Believe with all your heart. And see if God doesn't bring it to pass. The lady sitting there kind of heavy set. You raise up your hand, didn't you, lady? All right. You believe me to be his prophet, his servant, his witness? You believe this ministry is not just exactly just an ordinary, it's a, it's a, a sent ministry from God to warn the nations in these days? Do you believe that with all your heart? You're having grand trouble is what your trouble is. Because someone say, yes, she looks large, but I might tell you this, you're a preacher also, a woman preacher. You believe with all your heart now? Go home, believe with all your heart, your damn trouble will be over. Just have faith in God. Don't doubt it. Just have faith. Believe that what God says is true. That's all I ask you to do is have faith in God. If thou canst believe, see before the prayer line ever starts, here. Has, when the Holy Spirit, when you people like you are here, you don't realize the opportunity you got right now. I, I'm sure you don't. If you only know every one of the nine spiritual gifts to be placed out in this church at this minute, there are things that take place at the end of the Pentecost. See, I thought these revivals are far. That's what is coming in greater, greater gifts moving in. 
because it's the work of people right quick. It's begin to start when you see ministers getting together. They're gathering outside the gate. Don't forget the message as the Holy Spirit confirms the message. Remember the message. And then God will take care of the rest. All right, you're trying to get the people lined up. Some of the rest of you pray. Just start believing, saying with all your heart, Lord, I now believe. I now believe with all my heart. There's two men sitting right here looking at me now, right back here. One was looking sideways, he was sympathizing at the prayer line. The other was looking up like that with his eyes closed, praying. Yes, sir. Your prostrate trouble has ceased, sir. You that raised up your hand just now, because you believe. Put your hands over on the man sitting next to you, the elderly man there. He has a scientist trouble that's bothering you. That's right, isn't it, sir? That's right, raise up your hand. Now go home, both of you, be well from your trouble. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, that isn't it. What is it? It's the pouring. Coming into the Pentecostal move as a rattling. A both fell out together in the house, thank God. What are you doing in the same month? Amen. The scriptures must be fulfilled. So we don't need prayer, Paul. We need faith, don't we? All from the prayer line, hold up your hands if we're strangers to each other. And I don't know you all. Raise up your hands. Don't know nothing about you. None of your troubles. What about you? All right. How many out the audience knows that I don't know nothing about you? Raise up your hands. A little lady said a little bull came, having trouble with her bowels. You don't have to prove bother anymore, sister. Your faith heals you just saying. Raise up to your feet and accept your healing. Yes, you with your hand waving. That's right. Right, right here, sitting right here. A little brown coat on. Raise up to your feet. Stand up to your feet so the people will know there you are. Been suffering that bowel trouble like a cloud is like in there. But it's left you now. Jesus Christ made you whole. Amen. If you can believe, have faith in God. Oh, what could happen? A little lady sitting right here, she's holding a prayer card in her hand, sitting right back here looking across this way. Yes. You're, you, you believe me with all your heart? You don't have to use that prayer card. Put it back in your pocket. We'll keep it for memorial. Your eyes are right as best you anyhow. That's real. The man sat behind her. He's been bothered with a cough. That's right, isn't it, sir? Raise up your hand. It's gone from you, too. Now you can go home and rest. Amen. If you can believe, even a woman laying there on the top, I know what's wrong with her. I can't heal her, but you got one chance. Cancer's killing you. But if you believe with all your heart, there's a dark shadow over you. It'll leave you and you go home and be well. I don't know you. You got a prayer card? You have? You won't have to use it. If you just believe with all your heart, you're going to die laying there. So I'd take Christ as my healer and walk out. Trust my faith in the hands of God because the doctors give you up. There she goes to go home. Let's just give God praise, everybody. Give God praise. She's going to go home, leaving out the Lord Jesus Christ and stepping to heal. God bless you. Feel better now? Wave your hand if you feel better. There she is. She. The Lord God is in the work, getting up going home. Let's sing a song to God as we go by. I will praise Him. I will praise Him. I will praise Him. I will praise Him. Raise your hands to Him. Praise the Lamb for sinners Give Him glory.
Oh, my. Can you see why we're gathering at the gate? Look at that poor, crippled woman bound in that wheelchair sitting here last night. The Holy Spirit commanded her to rise from there. Up got that crippled woman walked out of the building. Hold! That little woman dying. Give her her choice. There she goes out with her hands up in the air. Give up to the doctor here and sing, and I will praise him, I will praise him. Where's the lamb for sinners slain? The Holy Spirit moving in. If thou canst believe all things are possible. about this, sister. You believe it with all your heart. You believe it's the Spirit of the living God. You believe that He comes and do, does these things to confirm His Word, what I've just preached about. You believe God could tell me what your trouble is? I don't know you. You know that. No more than I know those people out there. You're just a woman that got a prayer card somewhere where we call from and just happened to be the first one on the platform. Is it the same Christ Do you believe that the, the farmer ain't now? has come into this latter rain, as God said it would, and mixed it together, has caused this emotion amongst the people. The outside religious world cries, Who is this? What is this? But we know what it is. We see the nature of it. We see what it does. Now see if it's the Spirit of Christ. If it's the Spirit of Christ, it'd be like the woman standing from the well. A man and a woman. Now it won't be, you and I won't be them. No. But the Spirit of him is here. And he has to use my lips, because his body is sitting at the right hand of God and Lord. His spirit is here, and then if his, my spirit becomes his spirit, and my spirit can get out of the way by a gift, just move back by way of have doing it by a gift, then his spirit will speak. Is that right? You want me to pray for you for arthritis? And it's in your fingers. That's right. That's right. I'll tell you something else that you might know that I be his servant. You're praying for someone else. You got someone else on your heart, and that person's in a serious condition. Got cancer. The cancer's in the kidney, and they live in a city called Sacramento. You're from Oakland. Your name is Miss Belcher. Go on home. <laughs> you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart. It's His Spirit of doing that. If thou canst believe. All things are possible. How do you do? I'm a stranger to you, but you're not to him. We both know him because you are a Christian sister. If I could help you and wouldn't do it, I'd be evil. But I cannot do it no more than to surrender myself to the will of God and let him see, see what he said. You have an allergy. Spasmodic intestinal colon, the doctor said. That's right. That's your trouble. You believe with all your heart? Amen. If thou canst believe, all things are possible. Miss Andrews? That's right. And you're from Oakland. I go home and sing. Jesus Christ, don't do well. Could I do that? No, certainly I could not. It's the Spirit of God. Now that's the reason the world says, what is this? It's the devil. That's what they said about him. He's the Elzebub. He's the fortune teller. But they who know it cry, Hosanna! Hosanna! The Lord is coming! The Holy Spirit's very record of his coming by putting the former rain into the latter rain, what we believe. Amen. You're standing here for somebody else. It's your husband. He's all nervous and upset. You believe? Take that handkerchief and lay it on him and leave him. Believe now. Don't doubt nothing. You have what you say. Amen. You believe it all your heart? How do you do that? We are strangers to one another. God knows us both. You believe God can reveal to me what's your trouble if I submit myself to him? Then it'll be perfect. He'll speak. Would you accept what he said? You believe it. You're here for your arm, your elbow and arm. You had a, in a car accident. Heard it. They're thinking about operating. 
But you've come to ask God to heal you. That's right, isn't it? All right, believe him and he'll get well and you'll have that now for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. You believe? Everybody believing? How do you do, sir? I do not know you, but God does know you. You have a muscular and bone condition. It's arthritis and rheumatism kind of mixed together. That's right. You're a minister. Yes, I am. You're from Oakland. Yes, sir. You turn back and get well. God Jesus Christ makes you well. Have faith in God, please. Oh, we don't have to go farther. Don't you believe this with all your heart? Now is the hour. Now is the accepted time. Hold the prayer line there a minute, Billy. Hold the prayer line. Senator, what do you think of What do you think, backslider? Isn't this your time? Don't you see the scriptures confirmed exactly? The farmer ring, the first one, when he was here, come down into this group that people think is crazy and confirming that the latter rain that's been poured out in these last years and formed this great full gospel church, the former rain's moved right into it like God said, and we'll both be in the same month. Here we are. Former rain with the latter rain. Is that, is this, is this one of the, all right. Ladies, we don't know each other, but God knows his soul. Does anybody know this woman? Anybody? Well, yes, he hands up, you know. All right, let it be known. The rest of you sinners, watch this now, and think that that very thing is speaking to your heart, telling you that you should repent. It's the same thing as, well, tell this woman, whatever she's here for. She might be a sinner, she might be a backslider, she might be a sick woman, she might have financial needs, she might be standing for somebody else. I don't know. God does. But if he will reveal it, Will you expect it and believe that it is the Son of God, that His Spirit is here? It's not me. It's Him. It's not you. It's Him. That's Him speaking to your heart. Your trouble's in your head. You have trouble with your head. You're a minister's wife. Your husband's a preacher. Your name is Vincent. Vincent. The E S O N. There's something strange about the man. He was healed here the other night. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> That's exactly the truth. I see that. All right, go home. Bless you now. You can be made well. Believe on the Lord Jesus. You believe it? Come, sinner. Let me ask you just a minute. How about sinner, friend? Come here. He's talking to your heart. Come stand right here just a minute, will you? Let's give us a tune. Almost persuaded just now. How much more could he do? Almost persuaded now to believe? Don't lock some great fancy something. The Holy Spirit's here. Let's sing it now. And you sinner friends, come stand right here. Let me pray for you. The Holy Spirit's speaking to me. Call the altar. Somebody wants to come right now. All right. Let's sing it. Come now. Come right on. Oh, Lovely little Spanish girl coming up. Believe. Oh, come on now. Move right out of your seat. Come up here. Backslider, sinner, without God, without Christ, without hope, in the presence of the Holy Ghost. Why don't you come now? That's right, sister here. Come right on, take your place. Give now some soul to say. Go. God bless you, sister. God bless you, brother. Come out on my way. Some more convenient day. What other convenient day could you find? On the Mr. Max Beer. Maybe he heard that thing. I hope and trust that the man was saved and went to Jesus. But in a moment in his hotel room. A great strong man, well known, popular, just a referee to fight over team. Never thought of dying at that time. Young man, yet 50 years old, strong athlete, a choice of the nation. But in a second, a vein struck him in his heart, and a pain run down his chest. And he screamed, God, I'm, I'm coming. And here he went out to meet God. That might be your state. 
maybe not in that way, but some way you've got to meet it. Don't you pass the time when the Holy Spirit is calling like it is now. Won't you come now while we sing once more? You that's all frustrated. You don't know whether you're a Christian or not. Don't take that chance, friend. You have never accepted the great message of the Holy Spirit and been filled with his power. You've never did that. Don't take a chance on it. You say, some more convenient day. What if Mr. Dare would have said that? You, you, you must think of it now. Think seriously. This is the hour. Who is this? What's it all about? What's he given the same record that Jesus did when he was here on earth? No one can explain it. We can't explain it. I can't explain it. I don't know nothing about it no more than the scripture said it. And here it is. What is it speaking of? The close coming of the Lord Jesus. Come, will you now while we sing again? Almost Oh, don't let Satan hold you like that, brother dear, sister dear. Believe me as his servant. Believe me because it, my words are not mine, I speak here. It proves it here to know things that I know nothing about. It's him. I persuade you in Christ's name. Be reconciled to Christ this afternoon. Come, won't you now? Just believe on him with all your heart and receive it. While the personal workers are walking up close to the beach here, won't you come with them just now? While we keep our heads back, four or five or six raise their hands. Won't you come just now while we sing glory? Oh, Lord, earth away. You want the Holy Ghost, will you come? You that speak in the baptism of the Holy Ghost, will you walk up to it? Oh, that lady's trouble is all gone. Your lady's trouble is all finished now. You can go home. Be well. The rest of you down in that prayer line, just believe with all your heart. It's all over now. The Holy Spirit makes you well. Go believe in it. Come now. Some soul to say, Go, Spirit, go thy way. I'm more than a day. just now while we think one more time then I'll feel free to close and pray.
Remember the church service is not everywhere. I 